Today in the broadcast, we also talk with Richard Munson, author of uh, several books, but um, today we talk about this book, Nikola Tesla. Um, it's um, originally published in English and also um, um, in the Dutch uh, language available at this moment. Um, what, first of all, what, what makes you um, so intrigued about Nikola Tesla? Well, I had always known a little bit about him, but then obviously he's gotten more popularity recently because of the car that is named after him, of course. Okay. And yeah. then um, I think what tipped it over the other the way around for eh? me is that, yeah, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what tipped it for me, I was um, reading a magazine that had a quote by Larry Page, who is the mm -hmm. co-founder of Google, who referred yeah. to Nikola Tesla as his hero. Mm -hmm. And I kind of figured um, <laughs> if he's a hero to <laughs> To this guy, I need to know a little bit more about him. And the more I explored, the more fascinating of an individual he uh, became. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I saw some newspapers wrote that you did really uh, thorough uh, research for this book. Where do you start with a person like this? Well, I, the most important uh, and surprising thing to me was that I was at the Library of Congress once um, where they have a large collection of his um, papers. Okay. A lot of them are engineering papers and schematics of his various inventions. And I am not an engineer, so I, I sort of have to admit <laughs> that I, my eyes were beginning to glaze over a little bit. And I go to the library and I say, do you have anything else? Yeah. And out um, she comes uh, in a few minutes with two to three full boxes of letters. Oh, look at uh, you. Between Nikola Tesla and his friends and his business associates. And suddenly the man mm -hmm. becomes alive. And that yeah. was, to me, just... Um, one of the glories, I suppose, of writing a biography. Yeah. Uh, for the, the viewers, can you mention some of the important uh, inventions that he did? Well, uh, the gentleman had 300 different patents, and he is credited with inventing um, electric motors, long-distance electricity transmission, radio, robots, remote control, the very things that, if you will, are at the sort of foundation of our modern economy. Mm -hmm. um, what I find, and I think you will appreciate this, is not only did he achieve these, you know, specific inventions that became, you know, reality, yeah. but he also was um, thinking about the future constantly yeah. um, and envisioning everything from cell phones, radar, laser weapons, vertical lift aircraft. I mean, the list goes on. Um, yeah. The uh, actual inventor of the radar um, mm -hmm. said about 20 years ago that he invented it largely, in fact, f solely because he followed the precepts and recommendations of Nikola Tesla and noted that although Tesla didn't have the technology mm -hmm. at the time yeah, to, to do it, um, he was possibly dreaming, but at least he was dreaming correctly. Yeah. Uh, now there's also, uh, of course, Edison. And Edison and Tesla, well, they loved each other and they hated each other. And yes. well, at a certain moment, they're really was sort of a, uh, a war on currents. Yes, very much so. I mean, uh, uh, Nikola Tesla actually came to the United States to work for Thomas Edison um, and greatly admired the gentleman, although they were totally different, both in their styles, just personally. I mean, yeah. uh, Tesla was a bit grumpy and always had chewing tobacco in his mouth <laughs> and was kind of a bit of a slob, to be quite honest. And Tesla was, of course, this, you know, you know European, um, you know, intellectual that spoke eight different languages. And um, so, and they had just totally different inventing styles. I mean, mm -hmm. Edison was a trial and error guy. I mean, yeah. he would, you know, to make the electric light bulb, the incandescent bulb, he tried virtually everything for months on end. Mm -hmm. Tesla thought of everything in his mind. He called it cerebral. Yeah, that's, that's quite unique. And it's what I realized then when, when you think for yourself, how you uh, think and work well most of the time you think and then you start making prototypes and then so on but tesla almost figured everything out in his head and then finally start building yes i mean he claimed that he did everything in his head um and didn't have to um put it down on paper until it was finally fully mm -hmm. fleshed out that was a bit of an exaggeration but uh <laughs> what goes on in that man's mind was yeah. you know quite remarkable mm -hmm. That's uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and uh, did you also uh, mention his, his private life or maybe his family and? Uh... Yes, he actually had a, quite an amazing life. He claims he grew up um, as a Serb in what is now Croatia. Mm -hmm. uh, his father was a priest. 
Uh, he claimed that his early years were quite blissful because he was doted over by two loving sisters. Mm -hmm. um, but tragedy hit when he was about 12 years old and his brother, yeah. who was his older brother, the one that he admired and the, was the family favorite, died in, um, when a horse bolted. Um, and so you have this 12-year-old Nikola Tesla who saw his brother get thrown from a horse saw him actually die and his mother wakes him up in the middle of the night to come and kiss his dead brother goodbye. How's yeah. that for, you know, Abby, 12 year old, yeah. at 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And you would think that the parents then would turn to Nicola and say, yeah. you're the remaining son. Mm -hmm. But um, unfortunately what they did was always say, you know, your brother would have done it better. Even yeah, that's when motivation. Got yeah. In school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was a tough growing up life, if you will. Yeah. And, and you think that that's, uh, well, in the end, it is part of his drive uh, to sort of make extra uh, prestige uh, in his work? Well, he did for quite a long time. I mean, he, um, you know, learned eight languages and he mm -hmm. did all this great schooling. And yet his father in particular would always just say, mm, yeah. your brother would have done better. And so, <laughs> I mean, Nikola Tesla actually dropped out of school, mm -hmm. um, didn't tell anybody and moved to a town about 100 miles away. Um, played um, billiards and became quite good at making money playing billiards yeah. and w eventually got arrested for vacancy and got toted on home back to see his parents who you might imagine were not really happy no. uh, about this. <laughs> well, that, that's how it can start. Uh, in the end, it, he made a good job uh, to do. Um, was he recognized by society in his, during his life? He was a bit of a celebrity, to be quite honest. He would give lectures um, at various forums where thousands of people would come. And he would, um, he, at the time, you have to remember, electricity was a total novel um, it's, it's thing. It's almost like magic. Yes, and he was the magician. He was able to shoot lightning rods, you know, bolts across the room. He was able to hold light bulbs um, that were not connected to wires and make them glow. Mm -hmm. So he was... Um, he was quite popular in his own time. Yeah, and, and Tesla was from the alternating current. Uh, and um, in the yes. meantime, uh, Edison was more for uh, the other one. That is correct, the direct current. And there was that battle which became quite uh, pronounced. Um, and at times, as you noted, um, Tesla and Edison got along quite well. But on this particular issue, because Edison was so invested in the direct current, which does not go very far, it just doesn't have a lot of power behind it. Um, they had great fights where Edison would claim that the alternating current that Tesla was promoting that was more powerful and could go longer distances was um, something that would kill people. And so he proceeded to demonstrate the killing of dogs and cattle and horses and all sorts of other things to try to what a demonstration, alternating yeah. current. Yeah, no, it was a very unpleasant little battle. And I can imagine. It's really interesting because in these times, at this very moment, a DC is coming up again. Like, that is uh, correct. For, for DC homes and, and stuff like that. And that brings me to your um, interest because uh, you wrote already about electricity and power and stuff yes. like that. Uh, what, why were you fascinated by that? Is it your background from study or what? Well, I currently work for an environmental group and called the Environmental Defense Fund. We have mm -hmm. about two and a half million uh, members around the world, actually. Yeah. Uh, and so I've long been interested in environmental policy. And if you're trying to reduce pollution, mm -hmm. the biggest sector that causes the pollution is what makes electricity. So I've yeah. long been sort of fascinated about uh, its history. And in the course of, um, you know, a previous book, I wrote sort of a history of the electricity uh, industry, which, you know, obviously featured Edison and Westinghouse and a little bit on Tesla, um, uh -huh. but as um, I think, as I said, looking at uh, Elon Musk's car and um, Google um, chairman's uh, view of Tesla, I became mm -hmm. thinking I need to do more on him by himself. Yeah, okay, that, that's interesting uh, to understand. And um, at this very moment, you're, you're um, looking to uh, green energy and all um, alternatives for, for new energy? That's what my my day job is. Uh -huh. um, working. Yeah, I was for the fascinated for the fund. combination, like writing the book <laughs> day job. <laughs> and so, yes, I work on, um, I am based in Chicago, so I work particularly on trying to advance clean energy policies in Midwestern states. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. And um, well, this one is ready. It's, it's, it's been published uh, um, last year, uh, the year before, and now uh, published in the Netherlands as well. Is there already a new book in your mind, maybe? Well, I actually <laughs> am thinking about, um, I've been fascinated about what's going on in the agricultural sector. Okay, good. Um, which yeah. has been a, um, probably a bit backwards when it comes to technology. It's probably yeah. the least digitalized industry in the world. But mm -hmm. what's uh, intriguing to me is that there's this new wave of entrepreneurs or innovators who are not related to um, previous farming backgrounds. They come no. from Silicon Valley or high tech firms and they're bringing, you know, that, um, which would include, you know, making meats from, you know, um, culturing meats from um, stem cells. They would yeah. be making vertical farms that mm -hmm. are um, in warehouses near urban centers. It's making yeah. probiotics that you provide directly to the seeds and, and um, make them stronger or whatever um, yeah. else you would like to do. So I'm, I'm trying to do some profiles of Agricultural innovators is my next project. Oh, that, that's good, and, and especially in these times, like the, in the, the Corona crisis, um, some people expect a sort of renewal or a big reset, or everyone is rebouncing to how uh, the situation was. But one of the things uh, what came up is the eating healthy, um, eating with a smaller footprint, and stuff like that. And it's it's quite logical that the agricultural sector is uh, leading in that, or should be leading in that. They should be leading in that. And if in fact we are going to have about 2 billion more people on this planet, we do need to figure out some ways to increase food security and food availability. So mm -hmm. I would argue that we need these entrepreneurs, we need these innovators, these disruptors uh, to enter this um, very important um, sector. Yeah, uh, as I can see for closing down, uh, your mind is almost like uh, Nicola, <laughs> all these different <laughs> items. I, I and, wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe we all do wish, but Elon Musk wishes as well as we uh, understood. Um, <laughs> but I, I um, thank you very much for the uh, broad perspective. Um, for a start, of course, if you want to read the book, well, go to Amazon or wherever. The book is available everywhere in uh, English, uh, Dutch, other languages maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it's, uh, it's available as an uh, ebook, of course, uh, as well and as an original hard copy. Um, some people do like it still. Um, mm. And uh, well, thank you so much. And uh, can we check out uh, somewhere the, the Environmental Defense Fund, uh, if people want to? Yes, it's look? just edf.org. Um, it's too simple. <laughs> OK, yeah, <I> well, know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard Munson, thank you so much. And I say Amsterdam saying goodbye to Chicago. Thank you very much. You take care. Thank you for your time.